Thank you for listening. It feels so much better than I did. This Week in the Life video sees you going through the ups and downs with me. We go to Margate, we go to London, we're going to Wales. Listen what just happened. So I came to the shops to get a little tiny um, moleskin. This is something, right? Today's going to be about two things like journaling, diarying, writing and London. So I came to get a moleskin little mini um, notebook like that and they didn't have one. But what they did have is a diary version. And I was like, that's exactly the size I want to put into my little handbag, which I bring places with me so that I can write some stuff on the train. And it's just bizarre to me that that's 24, 25 journal. Anyway, I need to catch a train, so let's go. I headed off to London on the Bridget Jones tour, which will be in a totally separate video. Yeah, I can read the signs. Hey, very, very good morning to you. How is everybody doing? It's the next day and I'm going to be taking you off to Margate today. We're going to go and look at the Turner Centre, which is what an iconic place in Kent that we're going to go to. It's very artistic in there. Now, Julia Cameron writes about the morning pages. Julia Cameron talks about something called the artist's date. It feels a bit weird. Now, you saw my video about me sort of like... I know I've got to embrace now that I call, can call myself an artist, which is really weird because to me, that's somebody that has an easel, you know, according to her, if, you, if you're a writer, you're an artist. So I need to kind of embrace going on an artist date, which they say once a month is good. Uh, so today is that day and that's, I'm going to take you with me. I do feel very tired after yesterday and I'm pretty achy. So I am struggling slightly. So I don't think I'll be out for too long. But we're gonna go around the Turner Centre. I've got my journal with me and I'm gonna grab a coffee while I'm there. Nice little area to sit and do some writing. And I will show you the beaches because it's a gorgeous day. It's what, 16 degrees at the minute. That's my idea of heaven, that is. Um, lovely and sunny. The trees are full of leaves. And I'm also a little bit conscious that we're coming towards the end of the summer, which I always feel a bit sad about. Always feel a bit sad. But anyway, I've brought my coffee with me so that I'm, I haven't, li I've literally just got up, got dressed and, and out, we, here we go. I want to get that, you know the bottom of your foot when it's on the sand, it activates loads of like little glands, like the, the vagus nerve and the pineal gland and all that sort of stuff and it, it really helps get your immune system and, and all that sort of thing going so I'm excited for this I can't wait to sort of uh, carry on doing more sort of PR trips really it's so exciting I, di I did have a moment with myself where I was sat at the ivy having my lunch or dinner I was like this is my life this is what I do now you know mad So I've arrived in Margate, it's looking very, very blue today. It's almost looking like this is not the Kent Coast, this is somewhere else. Look at it. My goodness, look at that. It's really, really clear. Yeah, I'm amazed with that. So this here is the Turner Centre, which is the artistic place that I'm going to take you into in a second. And Margate is looking particularly lovely. It used to be famous for some cockles and winkles and, and things, but it's a bit of a happy place for me. So if you come off the main street, there are some really pretty little um, places to venture in these little roads. There's a famous bookshop down here called the Margate, Book, Margate, Margate Bookshop. Um, and look at that little ice cream thing. So see how gorgeous it is? Pretty, isn't it? like loads of people in the sea it's very early in the morning but the tide is in i think it's about as far as it comes in i can't get over how blue it looks it's never this blue it's always very brown and nasty but i'm not gonna really nice though so i'm gonna go for a long walk now while it's still cooler and then come back to the turner center later so this is something you're not seeing before it's a sauna and a 
scrubs. See that squeezy scrub sauna. Interesting. And there is a Lido beyond there. Can you see that? So you can go swimming in there and not float off. Which is amazing. So this little area here, which is crazy golf, I'm going to tell you a story, personal story. So we're heading in towards Westbrook Bay now, and this is where we used to come as children. And in there, they used to have trampoline. And if I was a good girl, it was always, if you're a good girl, you can go on the trampolines. And I used to love it. So of course, when I had my children, it was like, we need to get a trampoline in the garden, which we did. But now it's mini golf, which if you've been around a long time, you'll know, I don't do things like that. Um, I cannot get over what beautiful day this is today. But yeah, so this is my happy place because I felt as though when I was a child, like, here you go, look at that, isn't there? Um, lovely. So as a child, it was a bit, um, mum and dad were busy all the time, you know, didn't have a lot of time for attention and stuff like that. We used to come down here, my brother would always be good fun with getting the water in a, like a, an inner tube or something like that and stay in the water most of the day occasionally my cousin michael would come with us and he was always hilarious and uh, if nan and granddad came brilliant but yes we used to come in and bring all our stuff sometimes this would be our holiday for the year we would just come down here for like a week every day um and yeah it does feel quite a bit like a happy place so i'm gonna walk along that stretch of beach and yeah tide's really in right now in the sea can you see that I enjoyed dreaming about staying in one of these lovely places overlooking the sea and I was enjoying the smell of the salty water and the call of the baby seagulls. So there's these really, really cute beach huts which you can hire out from the council every year and these belong to them as well. Or there's some on the beach which you purchase yourself um, and get put on and taken off I think and then just pay for the, for the bit of land. So it's quite different. Now there's a cafe down here that we always used to go to and it looks like the owners have, have gone. Um, can't blame them really, flipping hard work in the summer. But now they used to go to Cyprus in the winter and uh, if, if by any chance they're watching, good luck to them. So it's like really, really hard. But it's a shame that's gone because it's a great place to go get a coffee and just sit out. And yeah, it's one of my favourite places. But the beach is pretty empty compared to Margate today. From all the way over there, Turner Centre to here now. This is Westbrook Beach. Nice, huh? So I'm going to sit here now in the shade for a little while, drink my little drink that I brought with me, and just watch the world go by in the quiet bit away from people. This is where my dad would have said I was antisocial, um, but I just like a bit of peace, you know. And remember when we used to bring a little Harley down here, which was just amazing. So I've just sat here for a little while looking at my Audrey Hepburn book that I just bought, made a little TikTok, which is really super cute. The beach is starting to fill up a little bit behind me, so I think it's time to go now. We're going to go back. I'm going to take you to Dreamland, actually. Dreamland is somewhere that used to have loads of roller coasters. I think it still has, actually, and a very famous... Um, I've written quite a big piece about this. The Jolly Boys Outing. It was an episode about Only Fools and Horses was filmed there. Um, I've written this story many times. Let me know if you want it. I'll see if I can find it. It's probably on a blog post somewhere. But yeah, so we're gonna to go to Dreamland and then we're gonna go on to the Turner Centre. I'm gonna show you that as well. But yeah, people are loving the beach today. Um, and I quite like my little quiet bit that I found here. Amazing, huh? Dreamland is an incredibly famous part of the heritage in Margate. It's an old theme park. I'm not sure what you're gonna hear in here because it's pretty noisy, but um, so there are a lot of concerts on here as well. They've got mustard coming, that sounds good. Uh, Paloma Faith was here last night. These are the old, the old water things. Do you remember them? I don't know if they still do that. You just scare the crap out of me, give me whiplash. But it's like over here there's um, roller skating, which is pretty fun. If you've ever done that.
don't know if this is where they had the concerts, I'm not too sure. It doesn't look like massive space here to sit, but I don't know. Could be this. Pretty good. So this is that old wooden roller coaster, which it doesn't look like there's anything happening there now. But it's I think it might even be listed. Just gonna find out. Just outside of Dreamland is this famous clock tower and opposite there you can go and sit in this lovely little place that's actually set on the beach and have some food and drinks. So the beach was filling up massively so it was time for me to go into the Turner Contemporary, have a little look at their craft goods on there for sale and then go into the actual gallery and I was fascinated by this art from Ed Clark. Baby, I will always stay with you. There's a small children's area there and then you come out to this amazing window and different times of tires you can see somebody bobbing about in the sea which is actually a statue that's built out there. So I went to look at the actual paintings and what I got to see, my eye, was a landscape and I was so thrilled to find out that Ed Clark was inspired by travel. When I had the show uh, less than a year later on the announcement I could see that you know unconsciously exhibition about this man Ed Clark just heard a really interesting story about his his paintings I'm not going to pretend to be an amazing artist but I do like hearing his story of how it all came to be really really interesting yes so I'm home I'm particularly tired I sat here with a cup of tea look um and i just found a new youtube channel that i really like a couple of van lifers really great personalities but i need to go around and see mum soon i'm very tired i was hoping to do a load of housework but i don't think that's going to happen tonight i think an early night because i'm i'm still struggling a little bit with feeling a bit poorly i can peg out the washing now i'll probably be here if it rains i can bring it indoors thank you for that i don't set the alarm now i wake when i wake usually early but even so I write in coffee shops when I want to. I work on my purpose. I focus. I get to know the staff there. They are my new routine. My journal helps others as they join in now. There's time. The bathroom sparkles. Mum has a sing-along session with me as we play songs from the 1950s, which she still remembers. My book's hit number one. A trickle of hope in note form filters into the bank. It's time now, time to market what I've been doing since I was in my teens. Thankful for the salary when I needed that, but it's gone now. Time to embrace the purpose. Time for storytelling. This is where the magic happens. This is uh, what we're about to sit and do is edit a lovely video for you guys here in my desk, which has got tech everywhere. So I need to just sort that out. A hot water bottle because my back aches. A nice cup of coffee and that's me for the next couple of hours. Hey, 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 so I have not vlogged very much today for which I apologize. I am actually feeling exhausted as well, so I'm not gonna vlog too much. I'm just making myself a little bit of a pancake over here. I've been just cleaning today. You know when you like travel a lot? See how lovely and shiny my, my kitchen is now. So I just thought I'd have a bit of a catch up. I do need to go around and see mum and there's loads more I was planning on doing today, but I'm not gonna be able to do it because I just haven't got the energy. Actually looks pretty nice for a gluten-free one. Oh yeah, so I try and get a video up on a Sunday because that's when most of you are watching. It, it's taken most of the day for me today to get the marketing side of things done for that. And I might have to whiz onto Facebook quickly and just try and share things, but I still got washing on the line. It's 10 past six, I need to go and sort my mum out. Delicious, look at that. So I've just watched my friend David's YouTube videos, setting up a new channel about older people starting YouTube channels because he's telling everybody he's 71 years old, which of course is young by today's standards. You may remember I went to David and Tam's over in Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> everybody needs to come. Seriously, everybody needs to come. Let's sit here, look. Gosh, right. There's a whole book coming out about that. Goodness knows when I really need to get down and do some writing. I just wanted to say quickly, if you're like a lot of the audience that watch this this channel are younger and if you've got children or had children, you'll know that it is very full on 
And now today, I haven't seen anyone yet today. And I think I'm okay with that. I'm trying to be okay with that. But it's, it's a new life, <clears throat> it feels like now. And when Nathan and I went to see Hugh and Cry recently, they released a song called Let Her Go. And it just got me. It's just like, you know, you've got to let them go. You've got to let them fly. You've got to let them do their thing. That is not always an easy thing to do. But yeah, I'm going to go see the first person for the day, which is the first person that I probably saw when I was born, actually, my mother. A good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. Look at the sunshine. It is rubbish day today. My least favourite job to do. So these trees are looking lovely this morning. Uh, Jim's looking busy and I don't like that. <laughs> but never mind, let's do it anyway. Whoo, we need a deep and meaningful, guys. Uh, so at the minute, I'm finding, like, who even am I? It's not imposter syndrome, it's just like getting used to a new way of life for me. Now, I'm going to take you somewhere later on this afternoon um, to show you a bit of real life, a bit of what's happening. And where these doors are opening, it's very exciting, very nerve-wracking, because this is what I've wished for, this is what I've hoped for. And now that that's happening, I need to make sure that I've got some tools behind me, which includes money. I need money behind me. I need a team of people behind me that are going to help with these sorts of things. And I have had a moment this week where I thought about the travel vlog. Where does that fit in? Does it fit in? And when I went to the art place earlier in the week that I took you to, his work was inspired by travel now a lot of what i'm going to be writing in my list of to be written is um is inspired by travel and certainly the first four books that i've got that i want to release one two three four like that are inspired by traveling or getting out there and sort of living your life in in that sort of a way because that's something i really need to do i need to not lose sight of the fact doing all these speaking engagements and running these writing retreats and writers workshops are great but I do actually need to produce the books as well at the same time. So I'm like, right, is there space for me to continue travel vlogging within that? And yesterday, for a moment, I thought, no, I can't do that as well. I know loads of you are going to go, oh, but we like, that's what we come for. I know it's what you come for. But if you're watching this vlog and you're this far into this vlog, you're probably somebody that's a little bit more invested in other things as well. A lot of people come, find out about a hotel that they want to know about, and then they go again. All of that said, I now that I'm embracing this new way of life, I am sleeping better. And I think that's going to feed its way into my health. There's something about my mortgage has just come in, which is really, really bizarre. I'm going to take you somewhere this afternoon. So I'm a bittersweet feelings around selling a property at the moment, which has got to happen because like everybody, every everything's got to go up so much and you've got to find thousands of pounds more every single month to keep afloat. And who can do that, you know? So um, I don't want to make my life about making loads of money or having loads of money. I don't want it to be about that, but I do need to be able to look after my family. And so I had to take this step and I had a congratulations call yesterday when we exchanged contracts uh, and the agent, the estate agent said, you must be so thrilled. And I was like, no, not really. It was never my plan to sell this place. It was my plan to, to keep hold of somewhere accessible for if my AS gets to a stage where I need an accessible place to live. But I'm having to sell it and I'm having to sell it at a loss. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles right now. But I'm embracing that as part of the journey to go forwards into the other stuff. Anyway, so yesterday, while I spent a moment thinking I'm probably not going to be able to continue to do the travel stuff, I had an empty feeling inside that was like, that's been part of what I've done on this channel since 2011. And that's 13 years. That's the 13 years of my life that I've done this job that I absolutely love and that I would like to continue to do. Um, and every single time that somebody watches, likes, shares, comments and all of that, it all helps towards, you know, making it successful. And if it's successful, I can continue to do it. But what I want to also do is make sure that I find time for the books as well, which are inspired by the travel. So it all kind of feeds in nicely together. But I, I'm just in a stage of like, who am I right now? What am I doing with my life? Where, where, which direction am I going in? And what do you guys want? Like, it's important to me that I give you what you want. 
and I don't know if I'll ever get that silver play button look I've got this one I didn't switch it on I've got this one behind me that YouTube sent me I want my silver play button I want my 100,000 subscribers I'm not going to lie I don't need millions and I don't need it to earn me millions of pounds either but I would love to have that validation if you've watched this very long deep and meaningful chat and it resonates with you do let me know in the comments like you have to do what you have to do don't you but what I want to do is keep you guys happy. Keep everybody. I want to keep everybody happy. I just want everyone to be happy. It's always great writing in the lift, isn't it? So we're just coming to check the post. As I promised you, it's been one of those days today. Good morning. Good morning. It is the next day. So I didn't film as many things yesterday with you as I was going to, but then a small creative piece which has gone on my TikTok. And I'm probably going to edit another YouTube video from the Vietnam series today. And potentially, this is really exciting, get a audio, my first audio book, which is a short story, up onto Spotify, just as a test. Um, and for the American audience, they can watch that on, on their um, Prime kind of uh, membership thing. Look at me sort of knowing what I'm doing. Listen. The end. This has been She Drew Me On The Train. Written by Louise Usher. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Look, so this is my book. This is, um, I don't know if you can get it on. It's not going to go on Audible because there isn't a book. It's just a short story. Look, of course, she drew me on the train, short story. Um, I was just about to review and submit it. How exciting. <laughs> I've done it, I've done it. So I've got to go through the technical spec, make sure my voice is decent enough. How can you not love this place? Look. What's not to love? Honestly, I can't promise that this isn't going to be a little bit emotional. Um, I'm already feeling a little bit emotional about it, but like, it's just so many amazing, if that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm going to address a taboo topic, which is that people, kids, grow up. And so many of us are single parents now, and I've been a single parent since day dot. In case you don't know that story. And there's going to come a time when they're going to go and do their thing and be grown ups. They're going to go and I've got to let them be themselves and do their own thing. And I've got to smile along with it and be grateful that I've had them. Like many of you that watch this channel are younger um, than me. Let's just check the fridge is still on. Yes, it is. I'm going to leave. The next person, a very nice bottle of, glass bottle of water and a little card, um, just to be kind. I just, I feel as though I've been very blessed with my children and, and all these years of enjoying them and they're growing up and you need to let them go and you can't help but then think, what's life like for you? And five years ago, my life felt so different to how it feels today. There's lovely things to look at out of the window. There's just an amazing view. There's the river, there's the water, there's everything. And I was just like, that, that's how life's gonna be. And it's gonna be easy to maintain. And I shall sit there and I shall watch the telly there. And about to say goodbye to this place, handing it over to somebody who I'm sure is gonna love it. And there's me here thinking, what does life look like for Lou now? And it's a really, really strange time for me. I was thinking about, uh, do I carry on with the travel stuff? Do I focus solely on the writing stuff? Do you remember I showed you all around this place before? Um, and I was like, you guys want the travel stuff. That's what you want to see me do. Like not many of you, look at the views on this video. There's not going to be many of you. How cute is this bathroom? Isn't it an amazing place? So, but that taboo subject is that, like I had my children young, but a lot of people, you know, of my age will still have their children like as teenagers or whatever. Um, and mine are growing up, you know, and they're starting to fly the nest. And where's that, Where? what is there now for Lou? I need to figure that out because it's not being a, you know managing this place this is going this is probably the last time that i'm going to come here and when i came here i bought it with my heart which was a bit silly because i didn't think about potential growth so if that's something you're looking at don't buy these hot property it's just have you seen that thing that's around that says in a hundred years time 
no one's going to even know your name. I don't know if that's still going to be the same with the digital world, but certainly people are like in 2124. Is this building still going to be here? Um, because already that's changed down there. That's now a climbing centre that used to be trampoline in and before that it was something else. No one's going to know who I am unless my books become that legendary, which they may do. I mean, we know who Charles Dickens is, but there's very few people that know. Like, who would have lived in this house in 100 years' time? And we worry about so many things, but I'm just trying to figure out life. I've spent so much time worrying, looking after my children, looking after my mum. Obviously, mum, she'll be 85 next week. So she survived for eight years, nearly nine years with dementia and heart failure. And that just doesn't happen. It can be a sad time. It can be a period of adjustment when you're, when you're getting that empty nest syndrome a little bit, which is what a bit of my books are going to be about. I just want people to understand that, yes, it is a thing. It doesn't have to be a taboo subject. We, because it hurts and you have to just get on with it. So instead, I will put this bottle of water in the fridge for the new person. And I will put a card in here that says to the new homeowner. Um, and I will wish her all the very best in her amazing new, she, she's probably gonna think that that's a bottle of fizz because it's not, it's a bottle of water. I thought to myself, I can't get fizz because she might not drink. It's been an adventure. It hasn't gone how I thought it would go. And I don't know what the future holds, basically. But I'm hopefully gonna figure it out and hopefully you'll be on the journey with me and you'll help me. And I don't know how much of this, what I'm rambling on about would have made the vlog because it's very personal and very deep. And like, who even knows what the right thing is to say? How, how are young people supposed to know that, you know? And just try and figure out this next stage of my life because I don't know even what it is right now. Spending some time with my daughter, which is lovely because she's been super busy lately and I miss her. Um, thank you for listening. And if you resonate with this, if you feel a bit on your own sometimes, then I send you the biggest hug in the world. Sometimes things don't work out the way that you would like them to. And sometimes you just have to meander with it. And I want that to be the theme of my book, that it's always okay, that it's gonna be okay. I just wanna be, I just wanna be okay. And I wish the same for you too. And if you're new here and you're thinking, who the hell is this woman? Normally I'm not getting on a plane somewhere and going and reviewing a hotel somewhere or, but I'm gonna check out from here now. I'm gonna show you some whales, go to draw my tears and Say goodbye to that view. So I'm completely aware that I'm in sunglasses in an underground car park. I'm also completely aware that I told you I was gonna go, but I really wanna share a couple of things with you. One, I've just sat down some incredible writing. I've used that emotion that I had to do that. And it was really good. There was one really, really powerful line, which you'll have to get the book for, which isn't out yet, won't be out for ages. But I've had an email from um, Spotify and all the other platforms to say that my audio book has been approved, which is insane. But yeah, so um, that's amazing to think that I've got an audio book on Spotify. As well, the other thing, I put it up as 99 cents and they was like, no, you need to put it up for six dollars because that's that's like the going rate. And I was like, well, okay, sounds like quite a lot of money to me, but I don't know because I do I do the audible thing. In fact, actually, I'm going to start leaving links down there for that. You know, the audible thing where you can download one credit a month. Well, that's what the one that I do, and you pay seven ninety nine. In fact, there we go. I suppose, but the books that I download are like ten hours, twenty hours, whatever. So I'm going to get back to some more editing tomorrow. Um, that's what I feel I want to do. My next YouTube video, which is going to be us stuck on a boat in Vietnam, which you would have seen in the middle of the Vietnamese Sea. Um, you would have seen that already because this is going to be well after. But yeah, I'm feeling better. Um, writing definitely is my therapy. So uh, I need to now voice note all my friends that I've gone to in crisis and said, I feel really sad. Um, but it is life. And I also started reading... Um, Audrey Hepburn book who was also a very sad lady so it's not just me um and it's not just you but anyway I'm gonna go because I'm gonna go home I am actually quite cold today so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna have an early night and watch the Kardashians and I will take you to Wales with me unless there's anything else I've got to tell you in the meantime I know that you're curious I know 
that you're strong but life can be furious and things can go wrong you go Something about the nature, being in the nature, and especially spending time with amazing friends. If we get joy oh sorrow, yes. There was a lot of laughter, there were some peaceful times, and I just felt so much better after embracing that the future is going to be a little bit unknown, but it's also going to be pretty, pretty awesome. Don't trench your desiring what you can control. We fly, we fly. Try so hard together and we might, we might be lost but not forever. Well, 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 I cannot begin to tell you how incredible it's been to stay in Wales with this wonderful view. Now, we are, it's time to go home now. I'm going to end my weekly vlog here, my week in the life. Nature is so flipping good for you guys. Honestly, look at it. I feel so much better than I did earlier in the week when I spoke to you. And I'm ready for what the future is holding. I don't know what that is yet. Are you on board with me? I hope you are. All of my love to you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.